Hi everyone, welcome to Live Darts. We've got a very special one. We are here at Lakeside with the defending champion, Glenn Durant. Glenn, thank you very much for having us again. This time last year we sat down and it was quite a story, so let's see what we can do this time. Well, that's why you've got me again, because, uh, you know, quite similar to last year, you know, we had this interview same time and uh, you always make me feel really relaxed and uh, you know, I'm really pleased with the work that you're doing in yourself and, uh, yeah, no, it's an honour to be with you. Massive compliment, thank you very much. So, looking back across 2018, how would you sum up your season? I, uh, I, a couple of objectives at the beginning of the year. I was desperate to win the World Darts Trophy. Uh, that was one that I hadn't won. Um, I'd been to Wala Man for about six, seven years now, uh, won the Classic. Uh, I was desperate to win the Open and you know some of the names that's on that title, the tradition to that one. Um, and of course I was looking for the three World Masters. Um, so it was, um, I, I've been really happy, I mean I played absolutely terrific, probably even the best start I've ever played uh, at the Belgium Open this year. Uh, so it was good to know that I can still go abroad and into Europe and win games. It was good that I was winning lots of games on the stages, you know, like the winning Lakeside, winning the World Darts Trophy, you know, doing really well at the Masters. So I knew that my stage game's good. And finders was the icing on the cake for me as well because I call that the mock exam for Lakeside. Uh, and, you know, that'll determine whether the, your practice regime at the moment is, is, is working. So yeah, I've got, to, I've got to be really happy. I'm uh, yeah, I'm in a really good place right now. A few disappointments along the way. Obviously, you only really spoke about it. The World Masters will yeah. take or took you some time yeah. to get over. Yeah, it did. did that? Is that the biggest disappointment of the year? Yeah, for sure. Um, Michael Smith, I thought, did a fantastic interview and round about the time I lost in the World Masters final, he just lost a really big tournament. But he was able to go to the Grand Slam like three or four days later. I had to stew on that loss, uh, the World Masters, uh, for for two, three, four weeks, and uh, it was quite tough. Um, you know, a three-time World Master, that, you know, that that was something that was a big ambition for me, and I was playing well. You know, Adam Smith Neil was having the week of his life. I was two nil up, and I remember he wanted two hundred and sixty, uh, and he threw three darts in less than a second, and I thought, my brain, as I looked down, I thought he's given up on the leg. And of which they said 180, and all of a sudden the 32 I wanted uh, to go three 0 up, you know, it just shrunk. And uh, after that, he was uh, he he played really well. And once I started chasing, and I started thinking, and uh, it was yeah, it was a tough loss to take. Touched on Michael Smith in the Grand Slam that as well. Were you disappointed with your own performance in the Slam this year? No, no, I wasn't disappointed. Uh, with I would have took how I played. I was extremely, extremely disappointed, and I felt I was unlucky. Now, a lot of people, um, I'll always shake their hands and sometimes say, I got lucky there, you know, the better player lost, etc. Uh, I was super frustrated. Uh, you don't win 5-1 against the seed, as in Simon Whitlock, and not get through the group. Um, I thought uh, Gerwin Price was terrific um, in, in our game uh, for a couple of reasons, and, 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 the, and it might surprise people, but at 4-3 I, I went in the lead, he sort of tapped me, uh, I'd done an 11 data, and all that aggression and anger that I had inside me was like, right, I'm going to get you, because you know he's been shouting and screaming, but um, at 4-3 that little tap he did, my brain started thinking, oh, I've got his respect now. And all of a sudden, I, I hit something like 45 or something, and then he goes out in 11 dart. And I learned a lot from Gerwin Price that week. I thought I thought he was brilliant, and uh, I know that might go against the grain of what happened in the final, etc. But uh, I, I watched and learned a lot. So I still had the opportunity to go through. Uh, I play Andrew Gildin, who can only go through if he beats me 5 0. So I thought if I can take a leg off him quickly, his heart won't be in it. Uh, and before I knew it, I was 4 1 down. But the most upsetting thing for me about that is that I went back to my demeanour, the bite and the flights, not being gracious in defeat, and they were the things I've been working on an awful lot. You know, just sometimes I give too much away. Uh, but then, I, you know, I battled back to four each somehow because uh, he could have won five two, and there would have been hardly any talk of uh, being unlucky, etc. Uh, and then he hits it with his last start when he covers the double eight. I then go off outside uh, and there's an athletics track uh, at the Grand Slam and I walk around and I'm 400 to 800 yards away of which I then send a couple of texts, you know, what's the score because if Gerwin Price wins the game I still go through. And I met the first reply was from Mac Elkin who said it's now 4-2, he's just, too, he's just missed two match darts. Then I heard this enormous scream, uh, uh, you know, it was huge, I thought well 
Whitlock's either hit a nine dart or something, but you know, later I found out it was a 170 that he hit. And then I got it was 4-3, he just missed another dart at double 19. And then it was just like a big unsmiley face and you know, just he missed two darts to win it and Whitlock hit it with his last dart. You know, I was disappointed, I was unlucky. So in answer to your question, I averaged over a hundred over the three um, over the three matches. Um, given that time again, you know, I, it, it was it, it was extremely disappointing. Uh, and had I not won the Finders Masters a couple of weeks ago, I'd probably maybe still dwelling on that. Uh, but as I sit here right now, you know, you, you're only thinking that the bit of history in my mind is that you know I've played these Ollie's BDO players who I'm at Lakeside with this week, and uh, and I won Finders, so uh, I think. You know the, the the disappointment of the Masters and the Grand Slam are at the back of my mind right now. You touched on it. Here we are here at Lakeside. Do you still get the same buzz, excitement when you drive in for the first time? Yeah, I, I recently read um, Stephen Hendry's autobiography, uh, and um, it's a bit like when a snooker player drives to uh, Sheffield and they see the Crucible, you know, for the first time, and you get that butterflies. Uh, and you know, when we come off, I think it's the M3 is the final road I do, and you turn in and you see that sign Frimley Green. It's uh, it's a very iconic place. You know, it doesn't change much. You know, the the tradition. Um, it's it's you know because I'm playing on the Tuesday this week. I'm itching to play. Uh, you know, and, and you know it looks like all the seeds have gone through in the top half of the draw there. So. There hasn't, not like the PDC where it was just shock after shock. Um, you know, a lot of the seeds, and it looks like it's going to be a very exciting last 16 as I sit here. Um, but I'm going to go down, I've got a little bit of media work to do tonight, and uh, I want to go and give my best to Dean Reynolds and uh, Jim Williams. Um, I might even miss someone there because there's three people I'm going to watch tonight. But I want an early night, um, and you know, what I'm quite good at now is, uh, you know, preparation for tomorrow. Uh, good sleep's important. Uh, good walk in the morning, which is a real secret. I've just done a couple of hours walk this afternoon. It's uh, you know because it's very, you know, it's in very intense. It's not as intense as normal because a lot of the players aren't staying at the lakeside this year, but most people are strutting around and you know they're trying to make a statement. Whereas so much quieter at lakeside this year, and uh, you know that that's been a little bit different. But you know I've got Mark McGrath now, uh, who beat Michael Smith in the World Series in Auckland before losing to Barney. So I've done a little bit of homework, because when the draw come out, I just assumed I'd be paying Smith Neil, uh, but of course his injury and his uh, you know put put pay to that really. So just excited to start playing for tomorrow now. You touched on the draw there. I was I was going to ask you that next. Was that is that a tough one? Because when the draw was done. We all presume that a fit Adam Smith Neil would probably beat Mark. I'm not being disrespectful there, but the form he was coming here, mm -hmm. momentum off the back of the Masters. But obviously the injury then killed it. So was that tough not knowing who you were going to play? And I'm guessing the same as us. You knew obviously of the injury, and all those question marks were one: is Adam going to play? Two: how is he going to play? Yeah. Were, were all there floating around? I'm one of them players who does the homework. You know, a lot of the players say, "Glenn, why do you look who you're playing?" But I've YouTube Mark McGrath. I've looked: is he fast? Is he slow? And reminded myself of how he played against Michael Smith. I assumed I was playing. And I wanted to play Smith Neil, you know, just for. I know revenge is not a great word, but you know, I thought it was set up for that. But I was also working on now playing Nick Kenny because I, you know, at one point I thought that um, Smith Neil wouldn't play, and therefore the reserve would be coming. It would have been Nick Kenny. So I'm one of them players who does a lot of homework and. You know, I see all these people say just play the board, etc. But it's just, it's you know, that's what I do. You know, I like to know who I'm playing, how they're playing, and uh, see if I can spot any strengths and weaknesses I can work on. And um, you know, so McGrath's the one who I, I know least. I met him at breakfast this morning, and it was a tough game for him yesterday. You know, it was a lose lose for him. He's playing a lad who's walking on there with a crutch, but he got through it nine nil. And uh, you know, I know he'd be so much better against me. As well, looking at it, you're the overwhelming favourite with, with the bookies, the same as last year. Is that a help or a hindrance yourself being such a, a strong favourite? Yeah, I've been number one now for about four or five years in, in, in the BDO, and uh, being a favourite is quite normal to me. There's a target on my back that's been there a long time, but I've still won over 30 competitions. You know, I've won two Masters, three Finders, World Darts Trophy two lakes has all been a heavy favourite so I don't worry about that so much as uh, as maybe I used to but 
I think the bookies have got it wrong. I mean, even money and then 10 to 1 bar is uh, not a true reflection. There's some great players who can easily beat me. Uh, at, but, but that lakeside stage is different. It's not like a, a regular game of darts. That, that stage and Andy Hamilton and Wes Newton will is probably uh, the reason I'm saying that too, because it is different. Yeah, I've played at the Grand Slam stage where it's in front of 3,000, 4,000 people and the Dutch Open was uh, final this year, three to four. This is intimate, this is 1,400 people where you can hear you know, the clinking of the glass and it's different and um, I think that's why I go in there more as a favourite because I'm, you know, horses for courses, I'm a past winner on there. Uh, so people like the Mitchell and, and that's why I wait to so good here. Uh, they just get uh, a good formula uh, and good preparation on what's a very difficult stage. We've seen as well your exhibition work this year has been quite intense again, but has that helped playing the likes of Raymond, Phil, Michael on these big exhibition stages? Because they're like mini tournaments now. Has that been a, a good barometer for yourself? I, I didn't know until the World Darts Trophy because around about the May time I'd only concentrated after Lakeside on exhibitions. So going into that tournament I was like, where is my match play? I've hardly done any tournaments, and uh, you know, in, in no uncertain terms, I've just been grabbing the money. You know, just while you've got that trophy, it's uh, just maximising the income, and uh, so you never know. Uh, so, and again, the same as uh, the World Masters, the same as you know, some of them big tournaments. There, I'm still winning. Um, and you're right, I, I treat them exhibitions as a match. Uh, you know, when you're playing Phil Taylor, when you're playing, I, you know, I've beat, played and beat Barney, Joe Cullen. Uh, James Wade, you know, I, I'm getting some fantastic work and in two weeks time I'm in Holland with, you know, I keep looking at that poster thinking, is that really me on that poster? Van Gerwen against Wright, Taylor against Barney, me against Van der Voort, Adams against Ronald Shelton, you know, how can, and you're getting paid, so how can you not enjoy them? So I've loved the exhibitions, it's, it's an opportunity to, with my limited personality to try and get it out and I, I sort of created, I think I'm value for money. I think I've put a, you know, a good shows on and uh, I'm getting regular work in 2019 as well. Um, so I've enjoyed them, I've, you know, they're lucrative and it's an opportunity to take that beautiful trophy around with me uh, and showcase what the BDO is all about. So um, yeah, I feel like I've done a good job. Touch on 2019, your future's been rather topical probably since this time last year. Yeah. Let's be fair, you've openly said you are going to go to Q School after Lakeside has yeah. finished. Yeah, the entry's in. Is that a help or a hindrance? Like, is part of your focus already on Q School? Is you not looking past Lake Size? The wrong word, but is it almost fifty-fifty? You've got half an eye on this beautiful trophy and half an eye on Q School. Genuinely, Phil, if I sat and thought what January for me is, um, I would crumble because one option is I could be a Lakeside three-time Lakeside champion next week. I could get my um, tour card and. That would have major implications on sponsorship, management, and work. The other option, and the other alternative, sorry, is that I could bomb out here first round tomorrow, could not get my cue card, and also there's big changes at work with, with structures and everything. So, my life, if I sat and thought about it, so who knows what January is all about? So, it's an awful cliche. And when I, you know, when I listen to people saying it, you think, surely you can come up with a better answer than that, but genuinely, I'm taking it a day at a time and a game at a time because if I sat and thought what the options are and what the circumstances could be, um, then my head would be messed up. And that's why I need to go for them walks. That's why I just need to go go for a swim and you know them sort of things because uh, it's a dangerous thing to do when you're thinking in a game of darts. In an ideal scenario, you win here three times, yeah. BDO world champion. You go to Wigan, you get your tour card. Mm. Then do you almost become a professional dark player outright if you get your tour yes. card where at the moment we all know you're open and honest work comes first and, and darts is very much something that you're very good at but yeah. almost a hobby still but yeah. if that was to happen then do you come, become Glenn Darren the full time darts professional? Yeah, yeah the foundations are set uh, and but that's why I don't think because um, I've only ever done the same job on February the 2nd 1989 I started my job you know on February the 2nd 2019 I could be handing my notice in for my job you know, bang on 30 years. Uh, I could not play Van Gerwen, uh, you know, Michael Smith and all the other guys while I'm doing 40 hours in a mentally stressful job. I mean, I've never done a day's work in my life. I sit behind an office and I, and I push a pen, but 
uh, mentally it's, it's a tough job what I do and a job that I absolutely love but so there's no way I would do that. And we were just talking earlier about yeah. fitness and uh, and kind of things that we're doing there. So well, it's a good sort of time. they're the kind of things that uh, I would need to sort of incorporate. And uh, it'd be an opportunity if I was full time to sort of go to the gym, uh, do a little bit of swimming, and just get mentally, get a bit physically fitter and mentally fitter as well. And uh, I would definitely be become a full time dabbler. I've got a seven year plan. I don't really want to do anything after the age of 55 so uh, six or seven year plan is, the, is, 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 is what we're looking at. Do you genuinely honestly believe you've got the game to go and mix it with the big boys in the PDC? I can only go off, um, I can only go off the Grand Slam and I can only go off exhibitions is my honest answer there. Um, I wish I was 25, I wish I was you know like physically fit and and you know, I, I feel the aches and pains, and uh, you know, I, I'm round about the same age as Gary Anderson, and he's saying how much of a toll it's taken on his body, and I'm talking about doing another seven years. So it's, um, uh, I don't know, I don't know is the honest answer. I believe in my ability, um, and um, who knows what the future's going to be. I'm really excited for Q School. Um, I, I've been to Barnsley and Wigan a few times to sort of acclimatise myself, but. People have said that's nothing compared to Q School, and it's, you know, I mean, people were talking about 800 and 1,000 entries, but I've had a text message to say that maybe that's a bit on the high side, and, uh, you know, how many is going to be there? It's going to be a little bit different and probably tougher than any open tournament I've ever played in before, but, you know, I'm there to try and get my tour card, and we'll go from there. How many of the BDO lads do you think will try their hand out? Mm. Because we know the restrictions are now gone, the freedom you can come back if it doesn't go well. From the Lakeside crew that we've got here, how many do you expect to go and try their arm? I think a lot of the English are going because obviously the European one's been on now, so the Wesley Harms, the Richard Veenstras, the Willem Mandings, etc. didn't go. Um, but I know, I know that there's entries in, you know, there's, uh, so I think a high percentage uh, of the top 16 who are English based will, will be there. Um, in fact, I don't know anyone who's not going. No one's categorically said to me I'm not going to Q School this year, apart from Unter Bunker and uh, the other Dutch guys I've just mentioned there. So I don't think it'll be any surprise. I know Jim Williams' entry is in, um, so it'll be no surprise to see the likes of Scott Waits and Scott Mitchell, um, you know, and, and, and the rest. Mark McGinney's been open that his entry is in and he's got a real dream to play in the PDC. Um, and when you put the mix of the tour card people, players who've lost their cards this year, then all these county lads uh, and these people go, it's going to be really, really tough and uh, I don't know, maybe survival of the fittest type thing. And I'd love to do a Corey Cadby and get in there day one and get away, but um, that's, you know, that could be wishful thinking. It's about, you know, there's points for every game that you win. Um, and I am a consistent player. So you know, I may have to rely on uh, you know being one of them players who's finished in the top seven or eight, who didn't get you know to the final one of the days. So let's see what that let's see what them four days bring. Darts hasn't been in a better place since the split. I don't think when you look at it because we've got Andy Hammond and Wes Newman playing here. Obviously they lost their tour card. They've they've come down. You're going to go and have a go. The cross now is unbelievable, and I don't think we've seen darts in a better place. Yeah, it's, uh, commercially, it's incredible and. Uh, you know, I've got a couple of sponsorship deals and management deals if I get my tour card and, uh, you know, compared to what I get as a BDO player, it's uh, three, four, five times higher uh, figures and uh, the interest, you know, a lot of people were interested in putting your, you know, your name on, you know, our company on your shirt, um, but only if you remain in the PDC. Um, but I feel good for the BDO, I think Des has to be commended of what he's done and He's already signed a three-year deal with Eurosport and Quest, and uh, guarantees the Masters and the World Dart Trophy. So, um, you know, maybe the BDOs yeah, moving forward again. And uh, I absolutely love the BDO; they've been so good to me. And um, I'd like to think they respect my decision to go to Q School. It's nothing against the BDO. In fact, I made that statement last year <coughs> of BDO for life, and um, because I was sick to death of the questions of PDC. <clears throat> but the first thing that Des does as the chairman, he um, you know he opens up that uh, opportunity to go to Q School without any restrictions. So we'll see how that goes. Glenn, it's an absolute <coughs> pleasure to have you sit down with us again. Yeah. Wish you all the best in your defence. 
of your title and your quest for a third world title, mate. Absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you very much, as always, Glenn. Thank you. Pleasure, mate. Thank you. Keep up the good work, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you.